Okay, start the recording. Okay, so today we are going to do something slightly different. We are looking at modules packages and then we'll go into a bit of reading files. So over the last four weeks, we have actually, um, we have written codes, especially some functions and so on. So our purpose now is how do we group them into this thing called modules and packages. So actually this lecture is a bit weird because it's like two short lectures combined together. Okay, so let's go to modules and packages first. Now essentially what is a module? A module is, uh, let's see, uh, let me just put a pen in the pen. A module, pen, does it work? Okay, so now my pen doesn't work. Okay, let's see. Hello, what did I do? Ships. It's nice. Oops, not. Okay, anyway, pen doesn't work. Okay, so a module is essentially a Python file. Okay, a Python file of functions. Okay, so that's what a module is about. So it's essentially all Python files tend to have a .py extension. Okay, it can contain um, definition of functions, variables, and so on. So we group um, different functions together so that it becomes a module. Okay. Now, in Python itself, there is actually this thing known as the um, Python standard library. Okay. So inside all these are modules. So for example, when we talk about Python standard library, talking about modules, right? Let's say in example, we have um, OS module, OS, we have system module and so on. So all these are different modules in Python that's already built in. Okay, so you can actually go and find what are all these modules. You just go to, um, let me see, uh, where do I install my stuff? So I go into, let's see, I'm not sure whether it's here. Uh, I have to find where I install my, okay, let me just check here. Okay. Where did I put it? Slash Anaconda, okay. so. So this is where I have my Morris. So Anaconda will be here. Okay. So our my Python module is all in this place called um, library. Okay, this library is where all my Python modules are. So all these are the modules inside the Python standard library. Okay, so you can open up any one of them. For example, we talk we always use our string library. You can open them up. Okay, you open up the string library and see what is inside. So, editor. See, yeah. So you open up the string library, and you see, this is what the Python string library is talking about. Okay. So all these are known as Python standard library, but what we want is to make our own library, oh, make our own modules, libraries and modules. Okay. So for example. We can just store, save your codon locator, the two codon locator functions from tutorial four into a file. Okay, so let's say, let me just open the tutorial four. Tutorial. Four. Okay, so let me just, where on earth is it? Okay, so open tutorial four. And let's say I save a few of them, okay, my start codons, for example, okay, into a module, into a file. So I copy, oops, I copy this thing, and I save it into a file, and I put it into my desktop. So I save it, so I put it inside my desktop, and call this as codon locator dot py file okay now on my desktop you can actually see that there's a codon locator 
So that is essentially what a module is. Okay. That's what it's trying to say. That's what a module is. Nothing very much. A module is just your Python file. From then on, we can actually import. Okay, so let's say I can go to your um, Python file, go to your um, console, and I type import. I try to import my own module back again. Hold on, locator. But it will give me an error. Okay. Because it's, when you try to import something and the module is not found, it will give you a module not found error. Okay. The reason is this. Okay. Where did I put my module? I put it in my um, desktop. Okay. I put it inside my desktop. But my desktop is not within the search path. So this is called my search path where it will look where python will look for all the different modules that i have make sense i have to put it inside my search path okay so this is what i have i get error simply because the module is actually not in the current working directory not in the current directory so it has to be inside this inside this list here which is called under system path so how do I get the module inside? This is what I have. The current working directory this is exactly what I do, system path. What you see on your computer can be different. Depends on how you install your stuff. Okay. But because the system path, the search path is actually a list. All I need to do is just to expand my list. Okay. So I import. First, I import this uh, system library. Then I extend the system path to include my desktop. Okay. So I put it in. Now my system path will have the desktop inside. Right? If my system path has a desktop, if everything goes well, I should be able to import my codon locator because it's actually in the desktop. So far, so good. Now there's no problem importing codon locator. Make sense so far? So you have to know where you are with respect to your computer. Okay, which folder you are and so on. So far, any problem up to this point? One thing that I need to show you is um, different programs or different operating system you will see this double slash i think mac is the uh, reverse slash mac uses this slash it's a reverse slash okay so mac uses the reverse slash um so which direction should you use for every operating system is slightly different okay so let's import another library called the OS library, the operating system library. Which slash you are supposed to use, you go and find this os.set. This will tell you which slash you are supposed to use. This is called the um, folder separator. Make sense so far? Okay, that will tell you which slash you use. Okay, Because if you use the wrong slash, you will not get anything. All right. So once we can import the codon locator, then we can use the functions inside it. Okay. So once we have the codon locator, so let's say that, um, for example, we have an RNA, this is our sequence. And what we have just now is the codon locator, right? We have to start codon and frame. A U G. Okay. So let us just run this and say that the frame is zero. The sequence is RNA. Now this will give me an error because it says that my start codon, the function is not found. Okay. 
The reason is, it is this function is actually not in the correct position. It is within this codon locator. So what you need to do is, when you're inside, when you import a library, to use the functions of a library, of a module, you have to have the library name as well. Okay. This is what it means. It says that I am going to use the function start codon inside the module codon locator. Okay. Then you will give me that, some answer. All right, so far so good. Otherwise, you will give me an error. Okay. So because there's no stop codon, so it actually gives me nothing. Gives me nothing. So far, any problem? How do you import a library or module? Okay, how do you import a module first? And then using a function within the module. So far, so good. Any issue? Yes, no? Hello, anyone still alive? <clears throat> Ryan, any problem? Ryan? No, still dawning, still dawning. What on earth are you talking? And we're also on earth are you talking? Uh, still doing, still doing. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is what we have so far. Now, essentially, this is what using importing a module and using a module is doing about. Okay, so why we have modules is because we want to group things properly. Okay. So sometimes, how do you actually do that? Another way of importing the module is that if we how to make this work? Okay, so we can actually do this. We can say that from codon locator import everything. So you import all the functions inside codon locator into the current location. So then this will work. Okay, it's a it's a positioning. Okay, we call this as a scope. But personally, I will prefer you to use this method on line 12. Okay. The reason is this. If I have multiple modules and I keep doing, I import everything. What happens if there are two start codons? Let's say codon locator have a start codon. Your um, nucleotide utilities also have a start codon which version will it use is actually quite unknown okay so i always prefer you to do this okay. another third way is instead of importing everything you can import specifically the function alone okay so let me just restart this uh, run console let me restart my kernel Originally, this doesn't work, okay? So, uh, okay, let me just copy the RNA again. So, 
RNA. If I import, so let's say I from codon locator. Oops, now I cannot even go from codon locator. I have to import my system and then I got to repeat the whole process. Oh my goodness. History, 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 history. And I from codon locator. I can import a specific function. For example, I only want start codon. I can import just start codons. This is a bit safer. A little bit safer. Okay, so I can have my start codons. RNA and frame zero. Okay, this will still work. Okay, that means I don't import everything. I just import a specific function that I want to use. All right. The third method, um, it is. So I can do this. My first method just now is to um, do what I did here. So I, let me see. Yeah, import go down locator. So let me see. This is a second. So this is a second method. Let me go back to a first method and show you the difference. Oh, hold on. Oops. No, I have to append the path first. Okay, then import, hold on. Locator. Okay. Of course, I need my RNA. Yeah. RNA. And I. As you know, this will not work because I need to put the module name in front. So codon locator in front. Okay. So far so good. So this is the first method. Another method that I commonly use is, for example, if I import something that's very long, if for example my file name is of codon locator will be a longer one, I can even do something like this. <clears throat> okay, I can import codon locator as another name. So I can import codon locator as C. So I'm, I'm shortening the whole colon locator, the word S into C. So then this will work. I don't need to call the whole colon locator. I just call my module C. It means colon locator. Okay, it will also work. So there are three full methods to do that or four full methods to do that, depend, depending on which one do you prefer. So far so good. <clears throat> so what are the four methods? Okay. Method number one is to import module, then use full module name. Okay, so this is the first method. Second method is to import module as abbreviated module name then you use the abbreviated module name okay. so this is the abbreviated module name part this is the second method okay. the third method is to import everything inside module Then you use function um, as though it is built in function. That means I print. This method, the third method, is 
we we tend not to like it because you can there's a lot of um, mix ups. Okay. Fourth is you import specific specifics inside module. Okay. The fourth method is you are using something that looks like this. Um, you are using this from codon locator import sub codon. This is the third method. Okay. So let me just write this. Um, so this will be import codon locator. Then you use codon locator dot and you have a function name, the function name that you want. Okay. This is how you use it. Second method is this. Import codon locator as the abbreviated name. Then you use the abbreviated name version. Okay. Third method is from codon locator import everything star means everything okay then you use your use the function name as though it's a name okay. the fourth method will be this so from your codon locator you import a specific function And you use it as a function name. So out of these, which one is preferred? The first and second is preferred. Third and fourth, generally, we try not to do that. Okay, because the third and fourth method, you can end up with a um, naming conflict because the function name can be used in more than one person, one location. Okay, so far so good. No problem, right? So these are the four different methods that you can use. Any issues so far? Let me see. No. Okay. Uh, you hear any problem? Go down the list. You hear any problem right now? No, no. Okay. Kobe. Kobe, all right. Chloe, are you there? Joanne? Yeah, yeah means okay, right? Okay, so let's just hunt a few more. Uh, Nabil, are you all right with this? Rebecca? Rebecca, you are very quiet today. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Johnson? No problem. Jasmine. Okay, long term. Hazel. Oh, Hazel. Forgot about you. Ambrose. Fine. If I'm fine. Erwin. All right. Okay, so more or, little, more or less, everyone is okay. So we go to the second one, which is a bit more, um, a bit messier. This thing known as packages. Now, packages is essentially you have multiple modules under one folder. So you import the package and then you import the modules. Okay, this is very common because sometimes um, one type of um, function or one library can be too big. Okay, for example, I can show you what some of the libraries have been too big. Um, go back to window okay. so let me show you uh, user uh, anaconda library 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 so you see what you end up with is I have these are the individual modules okay but I also have packages as well. So these are packages. 
the extra packages that you installed will go under this site packages. So these are all the extra packages that I installed. Okay. So for example, next lesson we are going to talk on using the BioPython library, which is actually in this thing called Bio. Okay. So you open up BioPython, it contains a lot of different things. For example, you want to do with um, sequence. If you want to do it with your sequence analysis, the first one is to your sequence I.O. Okay, so sequence I.O. itself, there are a lot of different uh, modules just on sequence I.O. I.O. means input output. Okay. And you realize that the, the main thing is there's this, always this file called initialization file. Double underscore I.N.I.T. Double underscore. So this is a very important file. Without this file, you cannot func like Python will not be able to handle the like the package. So this file can be empty. Okay, it must be double underscore. Or it can be single underscore, and it must be small letter because this is coded or programmed into Python to search for this file. So far, so good. Okay. It can be a. Uh, it can. This file can give you information. This file can give you. Can be empty as well. Usually, start off with an empty file. Okay. So, for example, how do we do that? Okay. So, for example, let's say we for lecture five, we have three different files, three different modules: your codon locator, transcription, translation, and then we group them under this package called lecture five. So the or, the organization is this. Okay. Under lecture five, which is a folder, inside contains the three Python files. We have three Python libraries, but it must also contain this initialization file, which can be empty. Without this empty initialization file, nothing works. So far, so good. So this is actually a very important part. You'll see this in your tutorial. How do you group things into a tutorial? So if let's say you can even have sub packages inside your main package. That's what we see just now. Okay. So let's go to your BioPython. This is your BioPython. So within BioPython itself, there are different sub packages. Okay. For example, you want to do your sequence analysis. Okay, where is your sequence analysis? Um, let's say alignment. You know, to do your alignment, you can actually read different alignment files. Your cluster O alignment files, which I think uh, Dr. Chan have already mentioned to you before. Okay. And all this. So how do you read your cluster O alignment files? Okay, how do you read your Philip alignment files and so on? So all these are file readers. Okay. And then what we can also do is how do you read your Jim Bank file? How do you read your FASTA file? So Jimbang file has its own um, sub package by itself. Okay, everything has this initialization file, although sometimes this initialization file um, is not empty. Over time, you learn how to use initialization file, you realize that it can be used for a lot of different things. Okay. So far, so good. The main thing is able to how do you group? How do you make your own module? For module, how do you make a package? These are two most important things. So far, any problem? Yes, no. Okay. You must have a module first. Then for module, you make into package. It's like when you're cooking, you need to have the, the thing that you want to cook first, then you can package it up. Okay, so far so good. Give me yes when you're, give me a hands up when you're okay. Okay. 
anyone not hands up? Jasmine, you're alright or not? Rebecca, Chloe? If you cannot hands up, then just speak. Lah. Rebecca, are you alive? Okay, okay, the rest can put your hand down already. All right. Okay. So essentially, that is what a module is for. Okay, a module and a package. So we can actually do two things in order to get the uh, module codon locator. We can actually form a package, import the locate the. So from a package, import the module, or we can just import it as though it is part of a package. There are two ways. Up to you. Similar ways you can actually do multiple levels down. We always do that all the time. When you're using next next um, lecture, when we do on BioPython, you need to use a few other stuff. Hey Yunhui, any problem? Your hand is still up. Hey. <clears throat> okay, so now. Sometimes after you import so many stuff, you want to check what have you imported. Okay. So how to check what have you imported? Use this function, dir directory. It will tell you what are the things you have imported. Okay. You have imported codon locator and so on. RNA. Yeah. If everything basically, it will tell you everything that's inside the current um. Scope. Okay. And then you can even go and find out what is, for example, you know that codon locator is actually a module. Okay. You can even go into find out what on earth is codon locator. What is inside codon locator? See, it only has a start codons. So for example, when we say that we import, we have actually import your OS library. Okay. So we can actually go inside and find out what on earth what is contained inside OS library. It contains a lot of different stuff. Okay. And then in OS library, the OS path is also a different thing altogether. Okay. So you can go to OS path is a sub library contains a lot of other stuff as well. Okay, so you can start to drill down and so on. So far so good. Okay, so let's import maths, math library. So we import math. So what is actually inside math library? Contains a lot of math functions. Okay. You have your um, up cosine and so on. Up cosine, up secant, um, your ceiling, your hyperbolic cosine, degrees, E, ERFs, and all this stuff. Okay. So then you can use it. So for example, you want to find, we are going to use the word pi. Okay. This is what pi is. It's actually, it's a, a variable. So we want to use, for example, cosine, let's say cosine 90. It will give you an error because you need the math. It's actually math library cosine 90. Okay. So this is cosine 90. Okay. You want to do square root, let's say um, math, and then you want to do square root of 64, which obviously you know that is 8. Okay, so you can do that. So far, any problem? Okay. So how does this work? Okay. We can we can use math. Okay. Then or else we can import the word cosine, the function cosine into the top level. So you can actually go inside math and import cosine. 
So you can do both things at the same time. It's up to you. But the more you import, the more memory it takes. That's for sure. Okay. The answer will not differ. So you always have to know what you have imported. So now you see inside math, there is a cosine function, but cosine is also at the same level as math. So it can be a bit confusing. If you import too many things. So far, so good. OK. So this is um, the first part of the lecture. Any problem so far on modules and packages? Or do you, anyone needs a bit of time to digest what has happened? Before we go to the second part, which is on files. Okay. Anyone not okay? Quickly. Or if you're okay, just say that you're okay. Just say that I'm okay. Then you'll be fine. Okay. 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 Lionel? Ambrose? Uh, Nabil, are you alright? <clears throat> Nabil, Ambrose? Oi, the two of you, what are you doing? Nabil and Ambrose. I already respond in the chat. Okay, is it in front? Nabil and uh, Ambrose? Yeah, I have to respond already. Okay. Oh, it's not showing up in the chat. Okay. All right. Okay. Somehow my connection is not doing very well. Okay, Nabil and Ambrose. Okay, right. Okay, Kobe, 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 Kobe. How about Kobe, Kobe? Yeah, okay, yeah, first one responded. Okay, all right. So far, so good. Okay, so let's continue. The the last part we are going to go through today is how do you read and write a file? Okay, reading a file there are actually two steps. One is you open a file, then you read or write a file. So then it must be two steps. One is to open the file for reading or writing. And then you can do it. To open a file, you use the function called open. Okay. Then you have the first uh, is a file name. The second, this R stands for what you want to do to a file. Okay. R stands for read. Since R is default, you can actually remove. Don't bother about it. W is write. Okay. So you have to be very careful with this. If you open a file to Okay, if it's a data file that you already have, instead of opening to read, you actually use W, it will actually clean up the whole file. There is no warning given to you. Uh. There is no warning given to you. I repeat, there is no warning given to you. If you use the wrong mode, instead of reading, you put as, instead of R, you put as W, the whole file will be wiped out. Okay, so please be very careful. Make sense, right? Okay. Python does not give you warning like in your operating system. Ask you whether you want to delete the file or not. It doesn't warn you at all. Okay. So same thing if you open a file for writing. The second time you open the same file for writing it will actually replace the first file. Okay. You open the same file for writing twice, it will replace the first file. Again, there's no warning. 
Okay, so please be very careful. You lose a lot of data that way. Okay, so writing is the same thing. You use W to write. Now, if you want to append to the end of a file, you use A called for append. So the modes of a file is actually very important. What we are going to show you is how you're going to deal with um, text file. We are not going to deal with binary files, although it can be quite useful to deal with binary files, but we don't bother too much about it. Okay. So let's say if you want to open a file that does not exist, Python will give you a file not found error. Okay. This file not found error. Okay. So let's say if I want to open this file, And where are all the files found? It's the same thing. Uh, inside your inside this path. Okay, the file must be inside this path. Let's say I want to open a file. But in my desktop, nowhere has this file name called my file. It will give you an error. Okay, the file is not found. So sometimes we want to ask, we want to um, escape it elegantly we use this thing known as um, try exception handling so we try to open this file if you hit with an io error okay or a file not found error okay, so we can try this try okay we want to open the file If there is an error, so let's say it accept, and then we accept. We, for example, the file is not found. And then we say we print file is not found. So it just tells me the file is not found because. You try the statement here, it gives you an error. It gives you a file not found error, which is here. You can actually stack multiple ones. So I can actually even do this. Okay, then I, I say try accept. Oops. I O error. So there can be many errors. The first one is file is not found, so it actually, so if the file is not found, it actually goes to another error. If you have I/O error, then you throw your I/O error. So you can have multiple check for multiple errors. Okay. So this is you have to read the Python descriptors. Which kind of error will it throw out? This is where you raise different errors. All right. So far so good. So this is how we say we as we kind of hand. This is what we call as exception handling or error handling. We want to solve it uh, cleanly rather than something can be quite catastrophic. Okay. <clears throat> so that's one way of doing things. But we go on to look at files in itself. Okay. So let's say inside my desktop, I actually have this file, which is contains two lines. And I'll show you how to do it. I just go to my desktop and I have a new uh, text document. Document, I say my file. Text document. Okay, then inside I put there two lines. Okay, these two lines. Nothing very much. So since it has a file already, I can say that F, which is actually a variable to store my file open um i say this is my file i have to give the full file name then i want to read it okay say this is an error so let me see what on earth is going on nope because sometimes it will give me something weird
my file dot text no file or directory reading yeah, is it my desktop this you no know, it's actually my desktop but why can I can't I read it I actually gave an error. No, it's okay. So let me see. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, false. Stop. Life easier, I just put the whole thing in. Usually, that will work better. Okay, so now it works. Okay, user Morris users. Okay, so if I do F, it will just tell me what on earth it is. It's just a, a holder. So now, how do I read the information inside my file? Okay, so I can put data equals to file. So this is a file handler. Okay, and I just put read. Okay, or I can say read lines, read all the lines. So data will contain all my lines. Make sense? So this is how I read the file, read the information inside the file. And you will see that there is this slash n, which is the um, next line, next line uh, character. All right. So essentially, this is how you read a file. If you can read a file, you can write a file as well. Okay. So this is basically how you read a file. What I will not show you is how do you change position in a file. You can actually do that. You can actually read individual positions of a file. You can actually do a file seeking. Okay. But this is more for looking at binary files. That means let's say you are reading a video file. Okay, This is more for doing that. But for most of our cases, we are not reading a video file, so we don't have to bother with it. Okay. So this is the part we do not bother at the moment. So how do you write uh, information into a file? Okay. There are a few things. One is if you open a file, after you open a file, when you have finished reading, right, make sure you close the file. So how do you close the file is use this close function. So the file is now closed, okay. which means that F is no, no longer there. It's already closed. You cannot read again. It will give you an error. Okay, it's IO function or close file because it will close the file already. Okay. So let's say <clears throat> I were to repeat this thing. You see, what happens is if there's a data file and I accidentally put it as write, okay, I will have a problem. Let's say if I do this and I close the file. what happens to my data file? I don't know. See, it erases everything inside my data file now. Because I instead of opening it for reading, I open it for writing. So it cleans up everything for me. There is no error. This is what I'm trying to show you just now. So let me put in these two lines again. just now there's no error 
So what I want is if I want to append to a file, I can use append. Okay. This is what I'm trying to do. I can write a third line to a file. So I write this. And you realize something quite interesting. I'm just writing a string, but will you go to the fourth line? So this is the position where it writes, and then you close it. Okay. Um, so now we go to look at what is happening inside my file again. So now you have a third line. Okay. But you see, uh, I write to the end of the third line. When you write, it stops here. It doesn't go to the next line. Okay. So what I'm going to show, going to show you is something that looks like this. Okay. Let's say I open the file again. Okay. And I repeat this. This is a fourth line. Right, then I close it. What happens is see this line is actually a stuck to the third line, the fourth line is actually stuck to the third line. Because why I did not for here, right? I did not put a slash M behind it. Make sense? So far, you can see what's, what's the error, right? So the slash n, you have to physically put it your, in yourself. So let me just redo it. Okay. One, the slash n, I have to physically put it in myself. So fourth, fine. And then I have to physically here put in the slash n. And this is the Then you see it to be different now. See, because fourth line, I still have, have a slash n. So fifth line, I have a slash n here, it goes to the sixth line. The slash n is important. So far, so good. <clears throat> Any problem so far? Now, how many of you <clears throat> have tried to do something like this? When you copy a video file, when you want to copy a video file from one drive to another drive, somehow it fails to copy. Because it will give you that there's an error or something like that. It fails to copy. How many of you encountered such, such problem before? Let's say you have two hard disks. You want to copy your video file from one hard disk to another hard disk. And certain files, as you copy, it gives you an error. Anyone have this problem before? Let's see your movie files or whatever thing. Anyone with such error? <clears throat> Not video, but other files. Okay, so Jasmine, what kind of other files you're talking about? Uh, programs. Okay, programs is a bit tricky. What I'm trying to say is uh, video files. Why Why sometimes when you copy video files from one hard disk to the other hard disk, it will give you error. Sometimes during the copy process or the old hard disk that you have, there are some scratches on your hard disk, which means that a part, a small portion of your video file is actually corrupted. 
let's say when you watch um, DVDs and so on, when there's a small part of the video file that's corrupted, you have sometimes a little bit of pixelation on a few for a few seconds, correct? That is when the file is corrupted. But will you want to copy the entire um, video with, uh, let's say, two seconds of pixelation, or will you throw away the whole video? Which one will you do? Anyone? Because very often video files get corrupted. Yeah, especially if you are trying to save your video from a, a hard disk that is about to die already, you can have errors. So you can actually use Python to actually copy out all the files. Okay, but that needs a little bit more work. It's not that it's not as simple as uh, what we have here. Okay, that is where you you read. Let's say your video file is a few, let's say one or two gigabytes. A whole movie and there's only like a few bytes that is damaged you can still copy out but it takes it's more tedious you copy uh, let's say um, one kilo base by one kilo base okay if it's possible okay so i'm just telling you that there are ways of doing it but you have to go and um, research and find how to do it okay so remember when you close a file you can write a con write things into a file. You can also write um, open a new file for writing. Let's say if I have this. Okay, so let me just get this right. I want to duplicate this file, for example. Okay, I can just say that um, original file equals to open then. Um, here. Okay, okay. So what I what I want to do is this. Okay, I want to copy the contents of my file dot text to my file copy. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to do. So what I'm, I have my original file. Here I read. Okay. So what I do is I just read. You see what they do? Oops, I forgot to close it. I open a reader file. And I open a copy file. But instead of reading, open file copy dot text. Open this file for writing. Small w. So what I can do is I can, for example, I can I can do this. Okay. So for line in orange this file and i can let's say print it prints out the lines quite neatly so i can repeat this simple process so i instead of print out the lines i will write into the copy file right and then write the lines in back again Then after that, I close both files. Oh, why did I always do this? So now inside my, I have this copy file and it contains. Uh, where on earth did I do? What did I do? Did it give me an error? Copy right, 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 right. Oh, okay. So I mean, there's an error here because after I read the file, it will just be gone already. So I have to repeat this process again.
So now let me just repeat this process. Because you can only read the file once. If you read the file, then you just disappear. This is file. Still nothing is like That's strange. Okay. Mm. Not beautiful. Okay. okay, yep. Now now the file is there. Okay. So it so it then takes some time between the copy and reading of a file. Okay, it depends on the operating system as well. Some operating system, after you close the file, then the file will be written. So you just have to be careful with all this. Okay. It is almost like when you are trying to download a file, then they download Excel file, and in between you open the Excel file, it may just damage the data. Okay. So this is actually how you copy and copy one file to the other file. OK, so let's go to the next part. How are we going to use something like this? Let's say we have a sequence. A sequence. Okay, So let's say we have a FASTA file and then we put it into a folder. Okay, so let's say, let me see uh, what is behind that. OK, FASTA example. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a bit messy. Just throw it away. Uh, okay, I forgot to close this file. Origin file close. If it doesn't close, it doesn't allow me to uh, throw away. So now what I need is I have a new document called festa dot festa example eg then i in here i put down my festa file so this is my festa file okay. festa file is actually just like that nothing very much okay. but here what i need to do is i need to change the file name because you see it's festa file dot festa dot txt so i've got to rename it <sighs> Oh, that's the file. Okay, so then you actually get correctly. All right. So how do I read this FASTA file? Okay. Now, a very simple way is I want to put it into a sequence. Okay. So how do I read the file? It's quite simple. I, we can do that. So we can have, uh, let's say, data. Data file, you say that it is using this. We call it the FESTA example dot FESTA. Okay. We can say data equals to F dot read lines. Okay, then we close the file first. Okay, it is quite. Um, I normally read everything before I close the file. I don't leave the file open all the time because um, if you have an error, the file can disappear. Okay, so for example, you have an open file and somehow your your computer shuts down or there's a um, hardware failure or whatever thing. Either let's say a hardware hang and then go we'll reboot it. The file can disappear depending on the operating system again. Okay. But in this case, I open the file, I read the data, I close the file, then I process the data. Okay. Because here it says read line, you only read the first line. There's another function called read lines. Lines, it reads all the lines. So this is a mistake that you will make.
both are correct functions, huh? But in this case, you read all the lines now. Because it's read lines. Read line means only read the first line. Okay. So this is see all the slash n is like that. Now what I want to do most of the time is can I make it into a dictionary that I have this sequence? And then this is my description. It's the first line right here. Equals to the sequence. I want to make it into such a structure from the FESTA file. How do I do that? Actually, um, the next slide gives you the example already. This gives you an example. So let's just see what we can do. Number one is we have the sequence for sequence dictionary first. Okay. Second is for the data, we want to strip off every single thing. That means we want to remove empty spaces. Okay, so how let's see an example how we do that. We actually do a line stripping. So here we say that um, for let's say line if I line number in range length of data. Okay. We say data, the line number equals to data line number do a strip process. So now the data is all cleared up already. It doesn't have the slash n, doesn't have all these extra spaces anymore. That is where you do the strip, you remove all the empty spaces from both ends. You can do a right strip or left strip. Okay, here we can actually do the right strip, that means remove spaces from the right side. But I usually just do both of them at the same time. Then we know that you have this this uh, carrot. Okay. So we say that for <clears throat> line in data, okay, that if line starts with this, okay. So if line starts with this, it's supposed to Gives you a descriptor. So this is actually the description. <clears throat> so the description is um, sequence line. Okay, but we want to start from position one, right? Because we do not want this all the time. Equals to an empty thing first. So this is where we are up to here. <clears throat> okay, if line is zero, is actually we do a split. You can do a split if you want. Otherwise, we just add to it. Okay. So if line starts with this, <clears throat> then <clears throat> this will tell us. Okay. And we also say that the description description In fact, uh, we, let me just do this let me just reverse this make it a bit e easier let's say description equals to this and then we put the description here So then the next part is else, else if the line 
is actually nothing. So that term is nothing. So this is, <coughs> we just don't bother with it. So finally, else, your sequence. Equals sequence description plus the line itself. Okay. So let's just check. So this is our data. Does it match the data here? Matches, right? So because if the line actually starts with this, this carrot or more than sign, I actually call, get the description out first. So this is the description that I want to get out. Okay, then it gives me sequence as a dictionary. <clears throat> the value is actually nothing first. Okay, but if it hits an empty line, this will have to deal with it. I will just uh, set up a pass. Or else, usually the next line. If I keep looping, right, the next line will still be the same descriptor. So this will still be the same descriptor. I will just keep adding, 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 adding until it hits the second one, then it changes the description line. So far, so good. <clears throat> so now you actually have your very own FASTA file reader. Okay, so far. <clears throat> yeah, I leave this here for whoever needs to take a screenshot. Any problem? Yeah, so this is actually your FASTA file, the, the data from FASTA file. It doesn't care whether they are there two. So you have three lines, you take all three lines in. So this is, you can see, uh, this AA and then up to TAA. So TAA, this is from first line. Then the second line starts from T, the second line starts from here, all the way until the this part. And the third line is actually the last part. Okay, so you just keep appending. And that's exactly what you want. Okay. So from then on, you can actually just print out. Okay. In fact, we have print out already. You can just say that for um, description and sequence in, uh, let's see. Sequence. Sequence in uh, seek items. This is where you learn in the second lecture already. You print the description and the sequence. So that's where you have. It's exactly the same as what we have here. Just that you print it out in the process. Okay, any problems? Okay, today's um, tutorial is a little bit tougher because it requires all your data, all the work that you've done over the last two or three weeks and put them into modules. And then you start using them. It is almost like getting you prepared for the project that you're doing. Okay. Last thing before we go off, any one of you face problems with or any question they want to ask with your individual assignment? <clears throat> Anyone? Assignments, assignment, individual assignments. <clears throat> Okay, so I was asked this question. The number of words. 
So do I read 600 words in total or do I read up to 50 words, 400 words and 150 words? The answer is the second one. Okay, for whoever asked the question, you actually know how I how I read pretty well. So it means that if I say 20 to 50 words, make sure you stick within 20 to 50 words. Huh? I stop reading at the 50th word. Similar here. Quotations counted in the word limit. What do you mean quotations? Yes, yes, yes. Everything is counted in the word limit. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, this is to train you for in future when you go out to work as well, because there are a lot of restrictions. Similarly, when you go and apply for jobs in future, if the company wants, if the company have no restriction on your resume or CV, that's fine. If the company wants your CV in as in not more than three pages, they will only print three page from you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I presume there's no any any other questions for this individual assignment. It's due this Friday. Let's see who has submitted or if there's anyone submitted. Hey, stuff is not there. That's fine. Let me go to LMS. Okay. Anyway, uh, I will stop the recording now because it's going to use up a lot of my hard disk space already.